Have you ever been taught how to feel good about yourself? Have you ever taken a class on confidence? Have you ever been told by your parents or by your friends exactly verbatim that you are good enough? Now, if you're really lucky, you will have had access to those things. You would have had those parents. But the thing is, not everyone has had that experience. And because of that, those people have suffered from not feeling good enough, good enough about themselves. And that is something that I am so passionate about. Personally, I have devoted the last couple years of my life to making sure that I'm good in myself, that my mind is taken care of, that I feel good about who I am, that I am most importantly proud of who I am. But unfortunately, like most things, that took a long time and it took a lot of effort. And there are so many things that I have learned, but above all, when it comes to building that self-assurance in yourself, what it really comes down to is the story that you tell yourself. It is who you believe yourself to be. It is your inner dialogue. It is how you treat yourself when no one is looking. Now we all put on these facades, right? We all wanna be seen as a certain person, but after a certain amount of time, you can only hold that mask up for so long. And I just thought, wow, like, I'm sorry about the dog, by the way. <laughs> but I thought, wow, wouldn't it be great to just not have a mask? Wouldn't it be great for this feeling of confidence to be authentic in myself? And it doesn't matter if anyone else knows, but I know. And you are with you all the time. You're with yourself all the time. So that is the most important relationship that you can pour your heart and your soul into because you are the only one waking up with yourself, in your mind, with your demons, and looking in the mirror. You are the one that has to suffer the consequences of how much effort you've put into loving yourself at the bare minimum, accepting yourself, being proud of yourself. So I have a few points I wanna to touch on and explain to you how treating yourself as you would your best friend is my absolute number one tip and advice to give to somebody who is struggling with building confidence in themselves. So to start off, let's talk about what self-esteem is because maybe this is a new concept to you. Maybe you have never heard it before, but I'm here to explain it to you. And that's why you're on this video. Self-esteem is how you view yourself. It's how you see yourself. It's how you feel about yourself. And it's not always true. In fact, there's really never a truth to it. It's something that you can decide. It is something that is molded within you from your friends, your family, your environment, how you grew up, what people told you, what society tells you, right? But self-esteem, it's, it's moldable, it's buildable, and it's breakdownable. It is exactly like a muscle. If you do not train it, if you do not work on it, it is not going to grow. In fact, it is going to get weaker and it is going to get smaller and you are going to feel the consequences of that internally. Now, if you work on it and it doesn't require that much, mind you, we're gonna get into that, but if you work on it even just a little bit every day, almost at a point where you're like, I don't even feel like I'm doing anything, you're gonna feel the effects of that build up over time. It's like interest, right? You might not notice the, the little charges in the day to day, but over time you're like, oh shit, this really added up. It is the exact same thing with building confidence. Let's see, I have a few cards here, making sure that I'm covering my topics. Um, but like I said, it is formed as like when you're a kid. So when you're super young, a baby to like, I, I would say, really your your mid to late teens your prefrontal cortex and it's like all the way up until you're 25 your prefrontal cortex is not developed properly like fully 
by the way, your prefrontal cortex is part of your brain, okay? Your head is like a sponge. It's going to soak up all knowledge from your parents especially, but everyone else around you, your, your world, really. And it's going to accept that as truth. So if you are told that you, you are just not the type of person to get a college degree, it's just, it's not for you. It's not your, your parents haven't gone it, your grandparents haven't gone it, why you? Or maybe you grew up super poor. Same story, it gets passed on from generation to generation. You're just not, it's not in your DNA. It's not in your blood, it's not meant for you. And these little stories from different, from different facets of your life build up your identity. They build up or break down your self-esteem. So at a certain point, once we have, once we realize we have the power to do so, we must build that confidence within ourselves that we have so desperately been seeking outwardly. All right? So now that we know what self-esteem is, why is it so important? Like I said, you are the only person with yourself from the day you were born till the day that you die, okay? Everyone has these beautiful gifts. Everyone has natural talents that they can offer to the world, but you are never going to share those talents. You are never going to reap the benefits of them if you do not have the confidence to share that out loud. If you do not feel it within yourself, my message isn't good enough and you're going to self-sabotage yourself. You're going to stop yourself from really acting on what you could become because you haven't built the confidence in yourself. You haven't built the inner love with yourself. Unfortunately, this is advice, building confidence, that is not taught in schools. It is something that you have to seek outwardly, whether that be YouTube University, my favorite choice, or through firsthand experience. Maybe you got lucky and you met someone, you met a friend and they're so confident and you were able to learn from them. I do my absolute best to be that person for people because it is so rewarding and fulfilling to watch someone grow like in front of your eyes. It's incredible, it's incredible. But it just, it eats me up how many people suffer from their own mind and nobody is giving them the tools for how they can help themselves. They just, they, they give them a pill, you know, but they don't go deeper. They don't really uproot those wounds that are causing such an issue in the first place. And that leads me right into how you can tangibly treat yourself like your best friend. I wanna bring up a example, all right? Let's say your friend, your best friend, mind you, is going through a really rough time, okay? She, her boyfriend just broke up with her. They've been together for a year. She thought that he was the, the one. She thought she was gonna marry him and she is absolutely heartbroken over that. Think for a second, how would you comfort her? Would you, perhaps bring her flowers? Would you go over and like rub her hair and tell her how worthy she is, how loved she is, how she deserves love, how she's gonna find the person or the person's gonna find her that she's meant for, that everything's gonna work out for her? Would you bring her a glass of water, maybe buy her her favorite treat? This is exactly how I want you to treat yourself when you are also going through a heartbreak, when you are also going through a hard time. Think in school of a bully. Do people wanna be friends with the bully? Do they want to treat them with respect? Do they want to do things for them? Do they want them to succeed? No, because they're mean as shit. So you cannot expect yourself to like you, to want to be your friend when you're mean as fuck to yourself. It does not make sense. Now, these little things that you do 
for your future self are incredibly important. It can be little things and it is little things, such as making your bed in the morning, such as packing your snack for, for school or for work or whatever, to really recognize and appreciate yourself when you do things for yourself. I apologize if the camera is shaking. Hold on, Kev. I'll be there in five minutes. It's my little brother. Anyways. So when you stop, and this is how you do it, okay? This is how you treat yourself in the, like your best friend. It is catching yourself in the moment of these, of these, noticing these patterns, all right? So when you notice and are conscious in your mind of maybe you told yourself a mean comment, stop and notice that you told yourself that mean comment. Hold on, Kev, I'll be there in five minutes, okay? okay. This is of the utmost importance and that is the first step is to recognize, okay? That was not very kind to myself. That was not me treating me like a friend. All right. Emma, look that side on your Jeep. Hey, Kev, I'll be there in five minutes. All right, Jeff, look out. Okay, I'm thank you. Uh, thank you. I'll be there in five minutes. Yeah, yeah. All right. Step two, how can I flip that script? How can I make it something kind? So example. Let's say you failed your test and you're currently working on your mindset. You're currently working on your confidence. Your immediate habitual reaction would be, I am so dumb. I can't believe that I didn't study more. I'm lazy as fuck. Like I'm such a procrastinator. God, like why did I do this? Is it all your fault? Emma, come on now. You could have done better, you know? And then it starts building up. You feel like I'm even getting like worked up over that. And I don't even have a test that I failed. But we, we make stories in our head and our inner dialogue matters so, so, so much, so much. So instead of that, I'm going to offer you a different perspective on it, all right? Hey, I understand that I, we failed this test. Like, it sucks, it, it does suck. However, now I can take this as a lesson and know for next time, it's all right. So I'm gonna show myself some grace. In fact, I'm gonna get myself a coffee for even changing in this moment and recognizing that I, I need to be nicer to myself, kinder to myself. It is very subtle. It is a few sentences of alteration in what you say to yourself, but that small alteration matters so much, so much. And I promise you, when you put this in practice with little moments in your day where you notice you're being unkind to yourself and you ask yourself, how would I talk to my best friend if she was in or she, he was in this exact same position? You're going to know what to start saying to yourself just by asking that one question. All right. I hope that this tip was helpful to you. Um, I also hope that you implement it even for a week. See what happens, you know? You can get back to me in the comments. You let me know. But thanks for stopping by on Aries Idea, Aries Ideas. And I'll talk to you soon.